I believe that God has put something on my heart. In fact, when he spoke to my heart about the message this morning, you know what I said to God? I said, really? I have never preached this message before. And this is going to be a very different Christmas message. I guarantee you. Very different. Sometimes we ask, well, why did Jesus come? Well, we've been in a series that has to do with the coming of Jesus in his own words. Can you bring that up for me, the first one? So, we've been preaching the last few weeks on why Jesus came. Now, you remember two weeks ago we preached and we said Jesus came in his own words. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Last week, we talked about Jesus came not to be served, but to what? Serve. To serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And this week, we're going to get into the word of what Jesus said about himself. And it's going to connect with this. I want to speak to you this morning very briefly on a vision for you. A vision for you. Now, before we go any further, let's talk to Jesus and ask him by the Holy Spirit to reveal something to us. Would you do that? Lord, we're here in your presence. We thank you for a great breakfast. We thank you for the people around us that we can enjoy their company. Most of all, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who is with us always as we put our faith in you. And so we ask right now that this Holy Spirit that breathed the Word of God into existence would speak into our lives. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, amen. Now, I want to ask you if you could name two or three of the most influential people in your life. As you look back, who has influenced you the most? Who are these people? Now, this is not a trick question. But let me tell you who the most influential person is in your life. It may surprise you, but it's you. You are the most influential person in your life. Why is that? Because nobody talks to you more than you talk to yourself. Your mind is a train that's always running down the track. And you get to decide who influences you the most. You get to decide that. So here we have a lady who has a choice to make. Amen. I'll give you an example. Let's assume that she's being tempted to sin, tempted to do something against God and His will. Now she's talking to herself. And on the one hand, she's saying to herself, you know, it doesn't really matter what I do because it's my life. I don't care, you know, what other people think. I'll just do whatever I feel I should do. On the other hand, she's talking to herself, saying, you know, I'm a child of God. What does God think about this? Would Jesus be pleased with what I'm choosing in my life? So you see, she is the most influential person at that moment. But there are people behind her, there are forces behind her that she might not even realize that influence her to make the decisions that she makes. There are powers in this world, whether we realize it or not, that are influencing us, us either toward choices in our life that are choices toward God, or choices in our life that are choices toward the enemy. Okay, are you with me? Amen. Now, Jesus spoke to his disciples about two spiritual powers, beings. These beings have a vision for you. 
they anticipate what your life will be like. Because there's a vision for your life, for your future. It's either a vision that's going to fulfill the will of God, or it's a vision of destruction. There's really no two ways to put it. And so, here's what Jesus said to his disciples about the vision that these two powers have for you. And you get to decide what you're going to choose. Here it is. In his own words, what Jesus said. Read it with me, okay? Let's all read together. If you guys know the word, you have it all memorized, just read it. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's all start together. Okay, ready? We've got, we've got an eager crowd here. That's awesome. All right, ready? One, two, three. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very surely I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Can we say that again? The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have I'm going to go on to this right here. Here's what we need to know. If we're going to fulfill the vision for our lives, that is a vision from God, we have to know who's for us and who's against us. Just that simple. Let's take a look. The enemy has a vision for your life. Now, who is the enemy? There is a real Satan. He's a being that was cast out of heaven a long time ago because he wanted to not just worship God, but he wanted to be God. So, in his exaltation of pride, he was cast down along with about a third of the angels from heaven, which we now believe as are the demonic forces. And so, this enemy has a vision for you. The Bible says... Jesus said, whoever came before me were thieves and robbers. So this vision has to do with the enemy wanting to take what has been given to you and stealing that. When a robber cases out a house or a store, what is in their imagination and their vision is that which belongs to someone else will now be mine. Okay, that's the vision. The vision is what someone else has worked for, I can get quickly and easily just by breaking the window of this car and snatching this bag and leaving. So the vision of the robber or the thief is that which you have belonging to them. I'll never forget this experience I had in my life. You know how when you wake up in the morning, it's sort of like you're an empty bowl in a sense, like, you know, you kind of like shake yourself, you, you got to figure out, okay, where am I, who am I, what, what is life, right? <laughs> it's like, no, it just floods in, it might take a second or yeah. so, but it just floods in. Okay, yep, yeah, that's why I'm here. That's right. <laughs> I remember going to bed, having a great burden on my heart. I was praying for a friend, a friend who was making some really bad decisions. And I had my heart like, like this. And I woke up in the morning, and it doesn't happen to me very often, but I actually heard the voice of Satan. It sounded like it was coming from underneath the bed, but it was way down. It was, it was like in a cave. It was a very deep voice. And the voice said to me, he's mine. That was my friend that I was praying for. That's all he said. Is, he's mine. For you see, Satan has a plan. And his plan is so evil that he wants everything in God's creation to be his. That includes you 
and that includes me. So the Bible tells us the enemy has this vision for us, and the, he's called the thief. The thief comes only to what? Steal, Steal kill, and destroy. There are many people in this world that don't even know it, but they're working for their boss, who is the major that's right, thief. That's right, that's right. And people will come up to you, and they can talk the sweetest talk, they can say the nicest things, but inside their heart, all they're doing is they want to take from you. So they're working for their boss, the thief. You have to be very careful. I mean, even this week, I got an email from someone that was saying, oh, we want to donate lots of money to your church. You know what it was? It's a scheme to get personal information, and then they rob they, they rob pastors and churches yeah. from, the, from the banks. I mean, we know all this. This is kind of an old one. Satan doesn't have very much creativity. He just goes through the same things again and again. But there will be people who will come into your life who will promise you the world. And they'll say it in very nice ways. You know how it is. A relationship. Maybe a guy might come along Oh, you know, you're the best thing in this life. I just love you so much. You're so sweet. You're such a wonderful person. And then once they get what they want, then you are history. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way the devil works. He uses you and then he throws you away. And if he doesn't throw you away, he tries to kill you and destroy you. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, well, Pastor, that's not a very encouraging Christmas message. Well, I'm going to tell you what God told me to Amen. tell you. Amen. Okay? Because there's a plan for you which isn't good. And you don't want to fall into that, and you don't want to give into that. That's right. Because there's an awesome plan that God has for you that is out of this world. Okay? So... The Lord has a vision for your life. Amen. If you think you're here by accident, then you're telling yourself the wrong thing. <laughs> Again, you're talking to yourself, right? <laughs> you're talking to yourself right now? <laughs> I hope you're not saying, boy, I hope you're going to be done quick. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you're not on some other channel. You know, if you're on the ESPN football, then you change the channel back to, you know, Highway Town back. Right here. Yes, yeah. Because the Lord has a vision for you. He envisions good for that's you. That's right, that's right. Okay? But it's something you have to do. This vision doesn't come automatically. It doesn't come in your sleep. It doesn't come while you're just reclining in your chair. There's something that you have to participate in in order for the vision of God to be realized in your life. Amen. Amen. What is his vision? That's the question. The Bible tells us in John 10.10. 10. Read it again. Can't get enough of it. Ready? I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, Satan is also a liar. So when you see on the commercials that the only way you can have, be happy in life is if you're you know, running around committing adultery with everyone or you're drinking yourself into oblivion you know, or you're doing drugs, that's a lie. That's right. The happiest people on the planet are those who are following Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because he came that you might have life. He doesn't want you just to have a heart that beats and then that stops beating when you're old. He wants to give you life and a full life, which means a good life. Yeah. Someone was telling me one time, they were saying, well, you know, I cheat just a little bit because look at the money that I make. So I asked the question, how much is a good conscience worth? Hello? How much is a good conscience worth? Because when you have peace with God and peace with everybody else because you know you haven't ripped people off, that's a good life. So Jesus has a vision for you great vision. How do you experience this vision? You have to first enter the gate. 
Jesus said, I'm the gate, I'm the door. You can't even get to first base if you don't even open up and say, Jesus, I want you in my life. That's the very first step. Let him in. He's knocking on the door. Don't let him stay outside, especially if it's cold. Let him in. Be a happy part of your life. And then what you need to do is you need to listen to the shepherd. If Jesus is the shepherd and he's saying to his sheep, hey, come this way, and you wander off that way, are you going to experience God's vision for your life? No. You might experience a cliff. You might experience a wolf. Or maybe an eagle swooping down. But you're not going to experience God's vision if you're wandering away from him. So to experience his vision, you have to listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow the shepherd. What would you think if I'm a sheep and the shepherd says, Mark, I want you to go over here. And I would say, shepherd, you spoke to me. You just spoke my name. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad you spoke to me. I love your voice. See you later, shepherd. And I go my own way. Do you think it's God's vision just to, to speak to us? No, it's for us to follow. It's to do what he says to speak. Right? What he says to do. I mean, we raised a child. and If we were to say, Nicole, Nicole, we want you to uh, take this to your room. And she would look up and say, oh, you spoke to us. You spoke to me. That's awesome. I love your voice. And then she just does the same thing. <laughs> you have to do what he wants us to do. Amen. That's how we experience the vision, is we follow the shepherd. Yes, sir. Man, is he a great plan for us. The Bible says he leads us to green pastures, right? Yes. He leads us to flow the waters. He renews our soul yes. because he loves us. As we heard last night in Christmas Eve, he gives. He's a great giver, our Lord Jesus Christ. Last question. If the enemy has a horrible vision for you, and Jesus has a great vision for you and for your life, then what are you talking to yourself about? What's your vision? If you say to yourself, eh, I, I just... I can't serve God. I'm just, you know, I'm just a nobody. I, I fail all the time. Well, stop yourself and say, who told you that? Who are you listening to? Jesus doesn't say that to you. So you've got to learn to listen to the shepherd, right? Because you're, you're the greatest influence of your life. And what you say to yourself is the greatest influence. So listen to the shepherd. Let me tell you a little story, and then we're done. As a pastor, I do a lot of different things. Sometimes really weird different things. Because people ask me to do some things, and sometimes I say no. But here I am on Wednesday morning this past week at church, and being the only male in the building, I get a call from someone upstairs, one of the teachers, Saying, Pastor, there's a bird in our room. Oh, wow. And I'm studying for the message. I was like, the first thought I think is, oh, great. Now I'm the bird catcher. <laughs> okay. All right. We had a, a bat in the building uh, oh, wow. last year sometime. And Mike Woolen was with us. And he became the bat catcher. So birthday <laughs> bat is Batman, too. So. Anyway, I go upstairs, right? And this bird is in this large storage closet, really large. I mean, it's probably about, you know, area like here where you can walk around. And I'm thinking to myself, a little bird, right? You know, size of a mouse? And I get in there and I see a pretty large bird. I'm not as big as a crow, but kind of like, you know, close. And I look at this bird, and I think, how in the world am I going to catch a bird? Years ago, uh, we had a squirrel in our house, and I tried to catch that, that was so hard. But how am I going to catch this bird? So I get a blanket, and I walk closely to the bird, and I throw the blanket over the bird, but the bird 
is pretty smart and it ducks down and then it runs underneath the shelves. And I'm saying, I am not going on my hands and knees, sticking my hand under shelves to get this bird. And now, in my mind, I have this vision. I am going to treat this bird nicely. My vision is, this bird has probably been in this room for over two to three days. We know that because sometimes somebody heard it earlier, a couple of days ago. And it's, it's starving, <coughs> and it's dying of thirst. And my vision is good for that bird, right? I don't want to just catch the bird and bring it snack. No, I'm not that kind of person. I don't want to kill the bird. But my vision of it is good. But in its bird brain, come on, come on. right? The vision that the bird has of me is that I am this big, ugly monster that has come to destroy the bird. And so the bird is running away from me thinking that I am going to destroy it. That's its vision. My vision is good for the bird. How do I get the bird to get my vision? I don't know how to do that unless I became a bird. Right? Isn't that what Jesus did? How could he get these human beings to believe that he has good for them instead of evil? He became a human being. Well, let's go back to the story because I know you're all wondering about the bird. So the next time in, I gave it a couple of hours. Next time in, I go in, and I know the bird is very weary because it's not flying around. It's just sitting there. And so I come up behind it, and I have a blanket. And I put a blanket around the bird and let me do that. And I picked the bird up. It didn't even struggle very much at all because it was so weak. And I brought the bird outside and released it into freedom. Because that was my vision for the bird is to be a blessing to the bird and to bring it freedom. God has a vision for your life. Don't let fear hold you back. Do you know what most people are afraid of? Most people are afraid of releasing their life to God. Folks, when we look at our lives and how, how messed up we are and how we mess our own lives up, don't you think God can do a better job at running our life than you can? So, just like the bird, we have to come to the place where we trust in that which is greater than we are to be able to free us. Jesus Christ came, this is the Christmas message, he came to give us life. Are you happy for life? Yeah. Oh, I, I love Jesus. Life isn't always easy, but Jesus is always good. Yes, yes.